I tried. Are you stealing from me? Please. I can make you tell me. journey will be so much more thrilling, Dot. The first Espano Suiza was built for the King of Spain. Isn't she sleek? The body's low and wide, but it hides an engine of fiendish power. Are you sure that's wise, miss, for a lady detective? Won't the crim see you coming? They'll see me first. Should I hold your bag for you, mother? I am trying to count. First class tickets to Ballarat, please. Oh, thank you, Bert. Seth, I don't know what I'd do without you two. You're about to find out, miss. We've got a couple other jobs on the go. Most of them a lot less trouble. What a pity. I take possession of my new house today. I was hoping you might help with the last of the furniture. Our old jalopy won't handle heavy loads. That's a shame. But if you call it this address, I've left a small token of my appreciation for you. Thanks, miss. Much appreciated. Maybe I should stay behind to help with the unpacking. Wouldn't I be of more use? I didn't invite you along to be useful, Dot. I invited you so we could have some fun. I'll do my best then. You do realise, young man, that if you're squashed on the tracks, no one can put you back together again. Ed, Ed, stay away from the edge. Yeah. Boys. I never understood the appeal of parenthood. Here's our ladies, then. Just in time. <laughs> Well, scenery has vastly improved, Dot, and we haven't even left the station. We left the dock so we wouldn't have to lick the boss's boots. <laughs> Miss Fisher's boots are different. Wow. You must be Mr. Johnson and Mr. Yates. I'm Tobias Butler. G'day. I thought you'd be wanting some refreshment before you pick up the rest of the furniture. Please. I haven't worked for a spinster before. Spinster? <laughs> Have you met Miss Fisher? I understand she's related to the king. Mrs. Butler would have loved that. She's certainly a toff. Well, it'll be a pleasure to serve a respectable lady with a strict routine who appreciates the quiet life. <laughs> Keep that horrible child quiet. Eddie, Eddie. Sorry, miss. I'm... 
Matron Henderson. What a surprise. Likewise. If I'd known, I would have changed my bloody booking. Mr. Cotton, that's enough. Keep out of it, Eunice. Come on, Eddie. And you can stick your eyes back inside your head, Missy. These local plots are useless. There's clearly been foul play. That's a full run, Miss. You've won. Game's over. What a relief. What about the man with the little boy? What about him? He seemed to have a set against Mrs. Henderson. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen, but I'm afraid we'll remain here for the night. We will provide light refreshments and try to make you as comfortable as possible. Hello, Sergeant. Just like to offer you my services. Hmm. I wouldn't worry your pretty head about police work. You leave that to us. Hmm? Uh, Inspector Jack Robinson finds my help invaluable. Who? Senior Detective Inspector Jack Robinson, City South. He'd be thrilled to think I could be of assistance. Well, I'll be telephoning my report through to him shortly, so I'll ask him direct. Miss Williams? <laughs> Constable Collins, how lovely. Tell the inspector I'll be right with him. Uh, the uh, inspector's not here, miss. But he thought it important enough to send you. Uh, only to tell you, in his words, to stay in your compartment, to please resist the temptation to interfere, and to not bandy about his name for your own convenience. Well, you can assure the inspector that none of this is very convenient. Uh -huh. 
That's one. Damn. No worries, Sarge. Nice job. Miss Fisher, I thought you were in your compartment. I tried my best, but I'm not good with confined spaces. I'm sure the local sergeant has things under control. The local sergeant couldn't control a country cake stall. I know Mrs. Henderson was on the train after Bacchus Marsh Station because I saw her reboard. Where did the train stop after that? Well, nowhere. It's an express to Ballarat. But I felt it stop. What's that? Uh, that's... That's a water stop, but the train only shunts there for five minutes. A lot can happen in five minutes, Constable. I've been told to steer clear of you. Oh, the uh, Constable here was just asking if I recall the train stopping after Bacchus Marsh. It's an express. Uh, apart from the water stop, sir. Miss Fisher, wait! It's it's pitch black! Follow my lead, Constable. I have the eyes of a fox. Miss Fisher, slow down! The carriage would have pulled up around here. Miss Fisher, wait! It looks like something's been dragged this way. Come on, men! Keep up! <laughs> No, let me, miss. It's very high. Don't fret, Hugh. I've scaled Kilimanjaro. <laughs> At least to the first hiker's hut. What's that? Oh, dear God. Let's cut it down. <sighs> Sir, Constable Collins. I hope you're not allowing civilians to tamper with a murder victim. Hello, Inspector. How was your journey? As uneventful as yours will be. Back to your compartment. Thank you, Miss Fisher. So, most of the bruising's around the neck. But not a lot of jewellery, you'll note. We'll take that into consideration, Miss Fisher. And I keep an eye out for a large faceted rose quartz and gold necklace, some diamond cluster earrings, and several exquisite. Good night, Inspector. All right, Miss Fisher. <clears throat> Take a full description of the victim's missing valuables, please, Constable. Yes, sir. I know this is a terrible time, but do you have any idea who might harbor a grudge against your mother? Everybody knew mother was difficult, but mother. <laughs> I can't thank you enough, Mr. Cotton. These windows tend to stick, and I've been in a fluster since I heard about Mrs. Henderson. Have they found her yet? They found her body. Seems she was murdered. Murdered? Someone hung her from a water tank. Good God. I believe you knew her. Yes. I can't say I'm that sorry. She's gone. But the daughter seems nice enough. It must be awful for her. Alexander Cotton. Yes. Detective Inspector Jack Robinson. Mr. Cotton was just helping me with my windows. You'll have to manage your own windows, Miss Fisher. I need to ask Mr. Cotton a few questions. What about? Just routine. Take my compartment. I was just leaving. <laughs>
I was in the dining car, I think. Just going. What were you doing in the dining car? I went to get a lemonade for Eddie. He was on at me about the show, how long till we got there. I thought it might keep him quiet. You're on your way to the Ballarat show? I'm not much interested in agriculture, but we had free tickets. Thank you for your gallantry, Mr Cotton. Goodbye, Miss Fisher. Ask him about his altercation with Mrs Henderson. Was your mother in full command of her faculties? My mother was many things, but she was not in her dotage. Um, she only retired a few years ago. That's when we moved to the city. So you were on your way to Ballarat to visit old friends? Yes, we booked a guest house for the weekend. You don't think she was still alive when... I'm sure your mother didn't suffer. If she was chloroformed like you were, she wouldn't have known a thing. I hope so. All for the sake of a few baubles. It seems that way. But her jewels look to be quite valuable. Father bought the diamonds back from the Boa War. I think Mother treasured them all for sentimental reasons. I'm sure the police will do their best to find the culprit and return your heirlooms. But... I'd like to help. A detective? Do you not think the proper authorities will get to the bottom of this? Perhaps. Eventually. There'll be an autopsy, of course. I know this must be hard, but my companion couldn't help noticing your mother arguing with the man in the dining car. Oh, Alexander Cotton. He and Mother don't get on. Why not? His wife died in labour while Mother was still matron in charge at the Ballarat Hospital. He blamed her. You don't think he did something to her, do you? I can look into it further, if you like. But we shouldn't jump to conclusions. Thank you, Miss Fisher. I would like your help. My Mary tried to tell her that our boy was about to arrive, but the matron Henderson said she was nowhere near her time and sent us home again. My poor Mary bled to death on the kitchen floor after I delivered Eddie myself. She never saw her son. And you blame Mrs. Henderson? I'd be a fool to tell you that. Surely you have better things to do. Another round of gin rummy? I can't buy playing cards. Complete waste of time. So you think he did it? I'll keep my own counsel on that. If he'd hauled an elderly woman up a water tower in a panic, he'd think he'd have a blister or two, but he has the softest palms. He could have worn gloves. And odd that he was on the same train trip with a woman he loathed. It wasn't planned. He won tickets in a competition. So if the compartment was locked, How'd you get in? I hit the lock with my shoe. Your shoe seems to have the ballistic capabilities of a 38 revolver. Fancy that. Hmm. So you're letting me in? It's either that or watch you hound me through the door. So the murderer was either one of the passengers or boarded the train at the water stop. Then broke in here and managed to knock out the daughter, possibly the mother too, with neither of them making much protest. Not that I could hear. Mm. I assume this window was closed when you found the victim's daughter. Mm. <gasps> A perfect match for Mrs. Ennis's afternoon frock. Ink background, peach print with an olive and red floral design. I'll take your word. 
Even I noticed the body wore red shoes. Crimson patent leather. I think we've established her exit route, conscious or unconscious. Inspector, I'm sorry to interrupt, but could I please have a word outside? I was just giving the inspector my account of finding the victim and my client. Client? Miss Henderson's asked me to look into the case. And what would prompt her to do that? Sir. She obviously recognizes my considerable talents. Self-styled and completely untrained. When you're both finished here, sir, the local police would like to talk to you about a lost child. <clears throat> the Ballarat police picked her up walking the rail line. She had a handkerchief full of the old lady's diamonds. I'm Detective Inspector Robinson. Let's start with your name. She's refusing to answer any of our questions, sir. You don't have a choice. You've been caught with thousands of pounds worth of stolen property. Perhaps we have a use for Miss Fisher after all. How does it compare with Kilimanjaro, Miss Fisher? Why the water tank, do you think, Inspector? Mrs. Henderson could have been strung up just as well on any old tree. The advantage of the water tank is the water, but our victim was hung, not drowned. Although, it would have made a very good hiding place. If not for the rusty ladder you fell down. I didn't fall. The ladder collapsed beneath me. Given your low expectations of police investigative skills, Miss Fisher, you may be surprised to hear that we've found Mrs. Henderson's valuables. I am. I mean, I'd be surprised if anyone found them. Except you, Inspector. But our thief is proving to be such a difficult customer that I've come to beg your help. No, I don't do children, especially not uncooperative ones. Looks like it's off to welfare, then. We both know that that won't help. I've done my best. I'm Franny Fisher. What's your name? I'm just over there if you need anything. Would you like to come inside for a fizzy drink? A sarsaparilla, perhaps? Seems bribery is not going to get us anywhere then. I'm tempted to tell them I saw you lurking on the platform, obviously trying to stow away. Your choice. I don't remember anything. I must have fallen and hit my head when I jumped off the train. You need to tell me how you came to be in possession of those jewels. You've been caught red-handed and the police are looking to solve a murder. They'll say you tried to rob the old lady and she put up a fight. Next thing you know, you'll be locked up for life. Or worse. I didn't kill anyone. I don't think for a moment you did. But you certainly know something. Jane. My name's Jane. I had a sister called Jane. It's a lovely name. Miss Henderson, how are you feeling? Better, slightly. Has there been any development with the case? Have the police questioned Mr. Cotton? Yes. His alibi is flimsy. Of course he has a motive, but no incriminating evidence so far. Then thank goodness I have you helping with the case. I have a motor car arriving in an hour's time. I'm happy to give you a lift back to Melbourne if you want to get off this train. I'm hoping the inspector's finished with me, but I wouldn't want to trouble you. No trouble at all. Plenty of room for one more in the car.
Well, that's one problem less. Isn't she glorious, Inspector? You ready, ladies? What on earth? They say the top speed's 85 miles an hour! But I'm sure we can do better than that! Constable, is it possible Miss Fisher has just kidnapped the victim's daughter and one of our suspects? It is now, sir. This will be interesting. Pleased to meet you, Miss Fisher. Oh. oh, sorry, I forgot to telephone ahead about my extra guests. We've all been somewhat distracted by Eunice's mother's murder. A murder, Miss? I do hope they chloroformed her first, but hanging's never pleasant. Keep your eye on this one. She's a stowaway, a thief, and probably needs delousing. I expect the police will come looking for her, but you can just refer them to me. And while I remember, careful with the hand luggage. My pistol's in there somewhere, and it may still be loaded. Of course, miss. Uh, appreciate the warning. Hmm. <sighs> Dot, whatever's wrong? I've never had my own room before. It's lovely. Is that all? <laughs> I thought you were still suffering motion sickness. <laughs> Oh, no, miss, I wasn't ill. Just terrified out of my wits. Well, that's a relief. I don't have to worry about my upholstery. <laughs> Mr Butler, you've done a magnificent job setting up the house. Everything exactly where it ought to be. Oh, thank you, miss. Uh, approximately how long will Miss Jane be staying with us? Till she tells us everything she knows. Very well. Uh, Mr Alistair Herbert, uh, Miss Henderson's fiancé, and her cousin, Mr Lindsay Thompson, are waiting in the parlour for you. On the telephone, Eunice said she'd been chloroformed. I know something about its after effects. Don't show off, Alistair. One more exam and he's a doctor. Can I see her now? Of course. Dot, would you mind showing Mr. Herbert upstairs to see Miss Henderson? Of course. This way, sir. I hope you don't mind our casual dress. We've come straight from rowing. We're both in the InterVarsity 8. Looks like your coach shows no mercy. All part of the sacrifice. But ours more the sporting hero. It's the way to win a university scholarship. Are you a medical student too? I mean, no, I'm studying law. I hope to go to the bar someday and specialize in crime. Fascinating area. It's a treat to meet a lady detective. Do you have any idea who's responsible? I was hoping you might help me there. Do you know of any particular enemies your aunt might have made? How long a list would you like? Were you close to your aunt? I was rather fond of the old girl. I don't deny she could be vile at times, and she thought poor Alistair was far too common because his father sells buttons in Ballarat. But <laughs> she never turned her talons on me. What do you put that down to? Charm. Thank you for the ride home, Miss Fisher, and for all your help. Are you sure you're up to going home? I have a physician friend who can look you over. I'll take perfectly good care of her, Miss Fisher. I'll telephone then regarding the case. Of course. I look forward to your call. So will I. Find me the number for Melbourne University, Dot. I need to have a word with Vice Chancellor. Good evening. Sir, I'm sorry to wake you, but this lady insists on seeing young Jane tonight. I I'm the dear child's aunt. I've been so worried about her. 
Mr. Butler, please show Miss Gay into the parlour. I've explained to your visitor that Jane's in temporary care while we continue our investigation. Thank you. But the inspector is expecting you at the station in the morning to explain why you abducted a juvenile. Well, I'm sure I'll have a very good answer by then. Good night, miss. I think of her wandering all alone at night. The constable said you were kind enough to take her in. Did he mention that she'd been found with stolen property? Oh, dearie me. I'm afraid my Jane has been light-fingered before. It seems your aunt is here. Oh, Jane, darling. Thank God you're all right. Now, come back home with me and we'll help sort out all this fuss. No, I'm not going back there and you're not my aunt. Oh, now, this isn't time for one of your stories. I don't want him near me. Who? Jane, dear. Now, I know we don't have these kind of comforts back home, but that is no reason for this kind of carry-on. Now, come along. No, please don't make me go back there. I'm afraid it's very late in the day to be discussing this. If you'd like to meet me at the police station in the morning, you can provide my solicitor with proof that you're Jane's legal guardian, and I can release her into your care. Don't be fooled by her. She's a devious child. Mr. Butler, please show Miss Gay out. Yes. <clears throat> You'll be hearing from me. No doubt. Jane. Who is that woman? What are you so afraid of? How can I help you if you won't tell me? I can't. No doubt about this job, mate. Bloody shocking conditions. Morning, Bert. Sess. I need you to inquire about renting a room in this boarding house in Seven. Find out all you can about the landlady, Miss Gay, and any equally dubious gentleman tenants she might have. Morning, Inspector. I was just on my way to see you. To explain yourself, I hope. Tea? I can't believe you'll hide. Appropriating a child who should have been in the care of the state. State care? You know what those places are like. And if that woman was Jane's aunt, I'll eat my clock. The poor child clearly loathed her. None of this explains how that poor child came to be in possession of Mrs. Henderson's jewels or what she had to do with a murder. Well, it's lucky for you. Our family convinced Jane she should speak with you. Come in, Jane. I found the jewels by the rail line. Why didn't you tell us this before? I didn't think you'd believe me. That could be because it's not particularly believable. What were you up to the rest of the time on the train? I was asleep in the guard's van mostly, but someone came in when the train stopped and woke me up. Who was it? I thought it was the guard. I was hiding and they were in a hurry. Whoever it was, they just grabbed a whole lot of rope and left. You couldn't see anything? No, it was too dark. But a little later, I heard noises, so I poked my head out to see what was going on. And? Oh, that's when I saw the jewels from the train spilled all over the ground. I should still charge you as a stowaway. Why me? I wasn't the only one. Who else was there? That rich man in his fancy striped jacket. You mean Alistair Herbert or Lindsay Thompson? I saw both of them at the station before the train pulled out. I couldn't tell which one. I only saw from behind, but one of them jumped back on. Thank you, Jane. I'll see you upstairs. Alastair Herbert whisked Eunice away far too quickly for my liking, so I checked up on both young men with the university. Yes. Mr. Thompson, the charmer of the pair, is in strife for gambling at Ormond College. And Mr. Herbert, the rowing champion, has actually failed the medical degree he claims he's almost finished. Thank you. I'll make a note not to consult them for legal or medical advice. But if I need to be rowed anywhere, they sound like just the ticket. Come on. 
It's ten shillings a week deposit now. Breakfast is at seven, dinner is at six. No alcohol, tobacco or skirts and boards due every Friday at twelve. Did you find the girl? Oh, good morning, Mr Merton. You look familiar. Have we met before? I know I've seen you somewhere. Perhaps you saw my stage act. I used to play the Tivoli. Maybe. What was your act? I am the great Hypno. That's right. I remember now. Always a pleasure to meet and admire. Can't take the room. Why? What's wrong? There's a bloke in there I know. From the tip. He's a bloody hypnotist. Same one made you cluck like a chook. Then lay an egg. <clears throat> you promised Miss Fisher. So you're just gonna have to go back in there. Come on. I can manage myself. It's all right, love. All I'm after is some information. You know a girl called Jane who used to live here? Jane's my best friend. Have you seen her? She's in a much more hospitable place than this. you again, Mr. Hogan. Where did you go after you farewelled Miss Henderson on the Ballarat train that day? You're not making this easy for yourself. <laughs> Anything I say in here, does it have to go any further? It'll go all the way to the High Court if you don't cooperate. It's difficult because of Eunice. I love her, you have to believe that. Go on. All right. I spent most of the evening in the City Watch House. What were you picked up for? Soliciting. I have, on occasion, visited certain ladies of the night. I, f I feel awful about it. Can anyone confirm this? What was the name of the establishment? It's very discreet. Police records will confirm I spent the rest of the night in a jail cell. So, your cousin was the sole beneficiary of your mother's estate? It seems that way. He's always been mother's favourite. I can't believe it. Maybe Mother found out that he owed money and wanted to help him out. Who did he owe money to? Lindsay is very dear to me, but he likes the occasional flutter and his gambling debts have got out of hand. Your mother never discussed her plans to change the world? Never. I only thought to look for it after Miss Fisher telephoned. I was so shocked when I found the letter in Mother's bureau. And Agnes's lawyer rang me yesterday. She left me everything. Poor Eunice. But of course, I'll share whatever there is. You don't seem surprised. Well, Aunt Agnes threatened it constantly because of Alistair. I just never thought she'd go through with it. Where did you go after you dropped your aunt off at the Ballarat train? I went to the automobile club for a quick ale. Ended up staying longer than I planned. I had supper there. Can anyone verify your story? 
Where was your friend, Alastair Herbert? Al wasn't with me that night. He went off to SWAT or something. Who else was at the club? You know, it was unusually quiet. I can't recall anyone in particular. I'd hone your answers better than that before Detective Robinson calls you in. You don't think I'm guilty. It doesn't matter what I think. But I don't allow myself to be lustfully compromised during my murder investigations. Then I do hope this case is resolved soon. Was Eunice aware that she was likely to be disinherited? Of course she was. Aunt Agnes wasn't the secretive type. Eunice was worried Alistair would find out. Maybe she feared he'd lose interest. She's a respectable lady. That old cow downstairs came after Jane, but Miss Fisher sent her packing. How did Jane end up here? Miss Gay and Mr. Merton got it from the orphanage, like some of the others. She's got no one. Not like me, I've still got my granny somewhere. Are you sure Jane's all right? What are you up to in here, huh? Is she bothering you? My friends from the Tiv, how did you enjoy your lunch? Um, my guts are still grinding. Let's see if I can help you with that. Look in into my face. eyes. You only see my eyes. You hear nothing but my words and my voice. You do nothing but as I command you. Why is that lady detective interested in Jane? Miss Fisher thinks she stole some jewels. Jewels? As I told Miss Fisher, I went to the automobile club that night. No one of your names signed in that night. We checked the register. I moved on from there. Just my usual haunt, same place as every Friday. Alistair could back me up on that. Alistair's not in a position to back anyone up. He spent the night in the Calton Watch House. Is that what Al told you? And Calton Station confirmed it. I'd like to remind you, this is a murder investigation, not a friendly chat. Where were you? That was me, at the watch house. Al and I have an agreement. He lets me use his name whenever I get into strife with the law so that I can go to the bar unblemished. Are you saying... Alistair agreed that you could impersonate him to protect your own indiscretions. I'm happy for him to share my accommodation. And he's happy to protect my reputation. We do look alike on a rough description. And someone of that rough description, either yourself or your friend Alistair Herbert, was seen unlawfully boarding the Ballarat train the night your aunt died. I'm glad you understand the seriousness of my inquiry. Oh, hello, miss. Uh, you might like to have an urgent word with Miss Jane. I see you found yourself some more valuables. And who's this? My friend Ruth, miss. I think it's time to tell me what's going on. I help you? <laughs> Mr. Merton. Hypnotics, illusions, and futurologist. The great hypno. Mm. I offer my services for soirees, ladies' luncheons, birthdays, and the like. Perhaps I could have a word with the householder? He made us steal. He hypnotized people on the street while we picked their pockets. You poor lambs. You're safe here. A visitor for you, Miss Fisher. A questionable gentleman. <coughs> Good. We've been expecting him. Is he here? If he gets his hands on me, he'll kill me. 
No one is killing anyone. Shall I telephone the police? No, I'll deal with this. But he'll hurt you, please! You don't know what he can do! Girls, stay in my room. Dot, lock the door behind me. The great Hypno. What an honor. Miss Franny Fisher. A pleasure. I've always been quite taken with the idea of being hypnotized. I'd be delighted to demonstrate my skills. Why don't you make yourself comfortable? Go. No! Sorry, Miss Williams. Jane, come back. Let me out. Jane! You hear nothing but my words, my voice. You will do nothing but answer the questions that I ask. Now, tell me where the girl is. Where is Jane? Jane. You can hand that over now, Jane. They've got you fooled, lady. They're liars! I'm not interested in your opinion, Mr. Merton. You're hypnotized. Not for a moment. And it seems that you can hold your own, Mr. Butler. 22nd Battalion AIF, miss. Dot? She's locked in the bedroom. Well, you might like to let her out so she can telephone the police. Mr. Merton and Miss Gay are both behind bars, and we've contacted most of the girls' families, including your grandmother, Ruth. Excuse me. Miss Eunice Henderson is here to see you. Thank you, Dot. Don't run off, Inspector. Thank you so much, Miss Fisher, but I've decided the police can handle things from here. The case isn't solved yet. But I've had quite enough of it. A spell at the seaside is what I need. I'm sure it is. Pity no one sent you free tickets like you sent Alexander Cotton. I don't know what you mean. You don't need to cover up a good deed. Unless it's more than a good deed, which I'm inclined to suspect, given that you lied to the police about your knowledge of your mother's will. I need to go. I have a taxi waiting. Hello, Miss Henderson. Inspector, Miss Henderson was just about to explain why she framed Alexander Cotton for her mother's death. Distinctive handwriting. And a very fine match to the addressee on Mr. Cotton's mystery tickets. Postmarked Hampton. Isn't that where you live, Miss Henderson? Well, they're a gift of kindness. It's too late, Eunice. Your fear has given you away. It's not what you think. It wasn't meant to happen like that. We only needed enough for a life together practice in the country. We only wanted Mother's jewels. But something went terribly wrong, didn't it? Mother woke up. We had to do something. We had no choice. This is not his fault. It wasn't meant to happen. The police will find him, Eunice. Or will he leave without you? Alistair found out about Mother's will, about Lindsay. He's furious with him. He's a desperate man, Eunice. He might do anything. You have to help us stop him. He's gone to the rowing club to meet Lindsay. Before training. You don't think he'll hurt him? Yes, <laughs> 
won't help you, Herbert. Don't let him do this. Yes. Yes. yes, for everything we want. Yes, just keep it calm. You're making things worse. Yes, yeah, we can still get away. Remember the, the cottage by the sea, remember? Just bring me the gun. Slowly. Don't trust him, Eunice. Alastair always planned to kill your mother. Don't know anything! The inspector and I both know a great deal more than you hoped we would. He knew exactly where that water tank was, so you could hide the body after you hung her. The only thing that wasn't premeditated was losing your mother's jewels. The rusty ladder slowed him down, but the whole plan was ruined when he panicked at the sound of a runaway child. Your mother didn't wake up, Eunice. Even a failed medical student would know how much chloroform to use. Did he tell you that? That he'd failed his degree? That's what finally tipped you, isn't it? That Mrs. Henderson was proven right. You were never good enough. Let him go. We've done such an unforgivable thing. <laughs> Miss Fisher. Thank you, Jane. I was prepared to let this go if you wanted it badly enough. But I'm glad to have it back. When are you taking me to welfare? I don't think I can. How would you feel about staying here? Not a nice girl. Well, I've never been very nice either. So you're just the kind of girl I like. Inspector Robinson is here, Miss Fisher. Inspector? To what do I owe the pleasure? I've had a word to welfare. They've agreed to let you foster Jane. Good. But you're not convinced. You do know it's not easy. Looking after a kid who's been through the ringer. Nothing that matters is easy. And it could be far worse. She could be a babe in arms. Can I offer you a drink? Uh... Perhaps... Just the one. What about babes of your own? Uh, no. <clears throat> no, we were never blessed. To all the kids who've been through the ringer then, Inspector Robinson. <clears throat> you might as well call me Jack. Everyone else does. Very well, Jack. And you may call me Phryne, although hardly anyone else does.
Does she love me positively? Do I love her absolutely? Positively, absolutely, and how? Is she nifty? Positively, under 50? Absolutely, positively, absolutely, a wow! And was she hard to get? Did I say no? And does she love to pet? Oh, 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 oh! Oh, baby, does she love me? Positively, do I love her? Absolutely, positively, absolutely, and how? 